Gay men should show their thanks by comporting themselves quietly and with dignity. That was Lord Aaron speaking following the passage of the Milestone 1967 Sexual Offences Act. But what was the significance of this act? And what impact did it have on the rights and for the lives of LGBTQ plus communities in the UK? And what was it exactly that Lord Aaron claimed gay men should be thankful for? After 500 years of legal repression, the 1967 Sexual Offences Act decriminalised homosexual acts in private between two consenting men over the age of 21. It passed the House of Commons by 101 to 16 votes. This reform was based on the recommendations of the 1957 Wolfenden Report. The main message of the report was that homosexual behaviour between two consenting adults in private should no longer be considered a criminal offence. While the Act decriminalised private intercourse between two men over the age of 21, it didn't create equality and was not born of an acceptance of homosexuality. The age of consent for heterosexual sex was 16. So men in the merchant navy and armed forces were excluded from the decriminalisation. The Act also increased the sentence for men convicted of having relationship with under 21s by three years. In fact, the number of men in prison for still illegal homosexual acts increased after the passage of the 1967 Act. What we need to understand about this reform was that it was not so much about gay rights as it was about what activities the state should or should not police. This is clear from the Wolfenden Report, which stated, there must remain a realm of private morality and immorality, which is, in brief and crude terms, not the law's business. In 1966, the Conservative MP Richard Wood argued if adultery was not a criminal offence, despite its damaging effects to the family unit, Criminalisation of homosexuality in private was unjust because it was less disruptive to the family circle. Even Lord Aaron, who brought the bill before Parliament, argued that while there may be nothing bad about being homosexual, there is certainly nothing good. At its best, the bill intended to encourage indifference and allow the respectable homosexuals to exist quietly. At its worst, it aimed to control the presence of homosexuality in public and to deter men from being homosexual. The MP Leo Abbs argued that the paramount reason for the bill was to prevent little boys from growing up to be adult homosexuals. Even Roy Jenkins, the Home Secretary who ensured the bill was given sufficient parliamentary time to make it into law, described homosexuality as a very real disability to those who suffer it. To understand why the Act was an important milestone, despite the homophobic attitudes and motivations of some of its backers, we have to first look at the five centuries of repressive laws it replaced. The legal persecution of homosexual behaviour is usually dated back to the 1533 Buggery Act, which made sex between men punishable by death. The law was left unchanged for almost three centuries, until 1828, when it was replaced with the Offences Against the Person Act, a change in name, not in substance. The death penalty remained in place until 1861, when it was changed to life imprisonment. Next came the Criminal Law Amendment Act of 1885, and its Labashare Amendment. This made any homosexual behaviour, any acts of gross indecency with male persons, a potentially criminal act. The only improvement for gay men was that it reduced the minimum sentence for those convicted to two years. It was this law that led to an epidemic of extortion and later even the blackmailing of gay men into revealing state secrets by Soviet spies. This too fed into arguments for reform. So, the 1967 Act was clearly significant for overturning nearly five centuries of repressive legislation. But the question remains, what impact did it have on the LGBTQ plus community? In the immediate aftermath, the act did more bad than good. Between 1966 and 1974, arrests for homosexual offences went up by 55%. The act's emphasis on privacy also meant that it perpetuated the stigma that homosexuality is socially unacceptable. For example, in 1988, Margaret Thatcher's government introduced Section 28, an amendment to the Local Government Act that prevented councils and schools promoting the teaching of and acceptability of homosexuality as a pretended family relationship. This law was overturned in 2000 in Scotland and 2003 in the rest of the UK after tireless campaigning by the LGBTQ plus community. As a response to the restraints placed upon them, Homosexual men and fellow LGBTQ plus members began to come together and formed organisations that demanded not just political but social change. 
Most notably, the Gay Liberation Front, formed in 1970, encouraged those in the community to come out and be visible, to help challenge the social stigma and force society to see them as people. The LGBTQ community fought for equal rights and demanded public recognition of homosexuality as a sexual identity not to be ashamed of. However, their fight was not an easy one, and following the Sexual Offences Act, it took over five decades for other positive changes to appear. While the 1967 Sexual Offences Act alone was not enough, and the political and social fight for LGBTQ rights is far from over, the explosion of the community's efforts after 1967 helped create a space in which all people can be proud and stand firm together. So it was the fact that the LGBTQ community did not passively show their thanks that led to a greater equality in our society and laws.